Hello, welcome back to Creative Painting. Watercolour, what's that all about? Well, basically you've got two ways of using watercolour. Well, there's more than two ways, but we'll just show these at the moment. You've got the pans, which is a solid block of okay. watercolour. Let's just hold those up so everybody can see this. This is the pans or tablets. That's yeah. right. And then the other way of using it is you've got a liquid sort of from the tube. Mm -hmm. there. Uh, from what I understand, this has got slightly more glare of it in, so okay. it's a little bit easier to it's work It's exactly with. the same paint. It it's is. Just that exactly that's the same a, pigment. But this is in a solid binder and that's in a, a more fluid binder. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's just pure choice which you use. Yep, yeah, that's right. Okay, so it's the same paint. It's just the binder that's different. Okay, right. The other thing is when we're using watercolour, quite often we use something called masking fluid. Now, I'm going to be using this masking fluid, and I think you're going to be using it on some paintings as we go through the series. So I'll show you how to use the masking fluid and what that's all about. Okay, now the paper. Can you tell us about the paper? The paper we generally use, John, is a £140 not surface paper, which mm -hmm. means that it's not hot pressed, which means it's not perfectly smooth. So it's got a little bit of a tooth to it. It's got a little bit of a dimply appearance to it. And unless we stay to otherwise, all the way through our paintings, we'll be, we'll be using, using this £140 knot paper. Yeah. And this particular paper, I believe, has been made in Holland using Dutch painting, or well, Dutch paper paint. Paper making skills. <laughs> that's not easy to say. Dutch paper paper skills since 1614. I can say that, and that's not quarter past four, that's 1614. So the people that have been making this paper have got some experience, so they should know how to make a good piece of paper by now. Okay, and it's a pure white paper. It's a cellulose finish as opposed to cotton finish, because quite often with the cotton papers, which are quite expensive, they do take a long time to dry out, and that's one of the common sort of faults, or one of the common problems that watercolourists have, is that they're painting onto a damp surface, rather than painting onto a dry one, and you tend to lift the colours off that you previously put on. The brushes that we'll be using in these watercolour paintings will be our usual John and Bond Pro brushes, which is this four, which is your Goated mop head, which is good for big watercolour washes and all sorts of other little things. Do you do have to say that we, it's just the goat just has a little bit of a haircut there, doesn't it? Yeah, the goats are not, no animal has been harmed during this programme. The goat's fine, you just give it a haircut every now and again and it, it really enjoys that and we can make brushes out of it. So thank you, Mr Goat. And then we have a synthetic brush, which is this number 10 round, which is a general purpose brush. We use that for places where other things don't fit. And then we've got the number 6 rigger, which is a good favourite brush. And then we've got the hog bristle, which is friends with the uh, the goat, I believe. Uh, and we just give the uh, the pig a haircut every now and again, and we make a, a fan brush out of it. Okay, so let's see how we put all those things to use. <laughs> 